people hey welcome to the show it's your host donovan thanks for listening it's off limits and we're doing gay mass tonight so talking about all things gay as usual so thanks for joining me live or in the archives however you listen i do appreciate it if you want to find out more about me or the show you can go to offlimitsshow.com where you can hear the show live or you can hear the show live on spreaker.com also on itunes um and where else (laughs) pride 48 radio and um, I'm forgetting some places, I think. But anyway, uh, oh, iTunes, I said that. And uh, also, you can uh, be sure and um, call in anytime you want to call in during the show, uh, starting on the next show. I, I didn't set it up this time. I used to have call-in shows all the time. Every show was a call-in show. But I stopped doing that for a long time because of a lot of the bullshit that was going on with people calling in. And uh, I've decided to start doing it again on the next show. Um, So I'll be sure to do that, take calls starting um, on show 24, which will be Sunday night um, or technically Monday morning (laughs) if you want to call in during the show. I have shows really early, so it's difficult for people to call in during the show typically because most people work nine to five jobs, unlike myself. So it is difficult, I understand. But um, you can always always also tweet me at um, Off Limit Show on Twitter and also on Facebook. Follow me there as well if you want to find out more about me or just comment on the show. So um, tonight's show is uh, dissecting GLBTQIA. And, you know, most people who are not gay or lesbian don't even know what GLBTQI stands for. (laughs) Most people are pretty confused about it. Even some gay people don't know what it stands for. But I did want to kind of talk about that and um, how we kind of got labeled, um, our community was became labeled that, you know, I think initially it was the gay movement, you know, in the 60s, the late 69s, early 70s, whatever. It was the gay movement and um, then gay and lesbian movement, then gay and lesbian bi movement, and then the gay, lesbian, bi, transgender movement. So it was GLBT uh, for the most part in the, up until I'd say the early 90s. When I went to SMU, it was, uh, they had a GLBT um, 
No. The GL, what was it called? GLBA. GLBA. Gay and Lesbian Bisexual Association or something like that. And then they changed it to GLBTA, you know, to include transgender people um, while I was there as part of that uh, organization. And um, so in the 90s, it was pretty much that as well. And then later on, they added on the Q for questioning, I for intersexed, and A, which sometimes means ally, and other times people sometimes say asexual. And there's been some controversy about whether it, asexual should be a part of our movement or not, because it's kind of the opposite of what we ourselves are fighting for in terms of um, having equality, uh, you know, despite our sexual orientation. I guess it's the same for them as well. But some people say the A stands for asexual, and some people say it stands for um, a ally, which would be like, you know, heterosexual friends and family members or whatever of the gay community who work with us to help promote our, our, um, stance. But there was an article I read uh, about queer being, um, sometimes deemed a negative word to use for gay people. And the thing about the word queer is, is that, um, queer is, is not, just gay and it's not just um it's not just um uh, bi or or whatever queer means um several things it's kind of an umbrella term and a lot of people who are queer basically they just feel somehow kind of on the outside of society and on the outside of what most people do in terms of their sexual orientation or, or their gender, but they don't necessarily identify it with one or the other and aren't trans transgender necessarily, but they can be. And, or they just want to identify as queer, meaning that their sexual orientation is somewhat fluid or there's bisexual, or they could be heterosexual, they could be gay. It can mean a lot of things. Um, it's sort of a fluid label. It's not something that you can kind of put on, uh, one kind of type of person. And so you can use that label for pretty much anything. And so I don't necessarily think queer is a negative term. I mean, it's just like any other term you use, the N-word or uh, the F-word, if you use those things towards black people or towards gay people. If you're using it among yourselves and or, and, or in a loving way or joking manner or whatever, or, or take the power back from the people who created the word in a negative light, then I think it's fine. But if you call somebody a queer, you know, because you're trying to be, you know, trying to use it as epithet or something, then obviously that is not um, something that is considered to be okay. Um, and so that's where the word kind of comes from. And I don't know if most people who, you know, it's kind of started in the sixties and the seventies as part of the people who weren't really necessarily gay or lesbian, but they were kind of just, like I said, sexually fluid. And um, so that's really what it is. And a lot of times queer people will be people who kind of like gay men who dress up as fairies or whatever, or they can be lesbians who are, uh, who are not necessarily gay or bi or, 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 or um, lesbian, but they're whatever they feel like in the moment. And so they just kind of go with the flow. <laughs> it could be pansexualism. It could be polygamy. It could be poly, you know, it could be a lot of all these sorts of sorts of different types of being in a sexual way that is kind of outside of the society, societal norm. So that's what queer kind of comes from and means. Um, and so I, I don't know if you know that, but, and then gay, of course, gay, um, is the word, um, that most people utilize, um, when they refer to game to homosexual men and the word, you know, as you, most people, most people know, uh, the word initially was used, um, in the, the well, in the way of meaning gay, meaning like carefree and fun and bright and joyful and whatever. And that's the word, the word's initial meaning. But in the early 17th, the early 17th century, it began to be associated with Im immorality. And um, they added, actually added a word to it or a meaning to the word uh, to mean addicted to pleasures and dispensations, uh, dissip dissipations. Is that the word it says? Dissipations is what it says. Euphemistically of loose 
and immoral life. So gay began to be someone who was somewhat of a, a slut or, <laughs> or um, morally reprehensible in some way. And it kind of came to be something away from just the original carefree meaning of the word. And in the 19th century, the word referred to a woman who was a prostitute and a gay man was someone who slept with a lot of women, usually prostitutes. So, you know, ironically, it, you know, today it, a gay man doesn't sleep with women. <laughs> today, gay means, you know, something completely different. And um, then the 20s and 30s, though, the word began to kind of morph into something else. And uh, in the terms of sexual meaning, the word a gay man no longer just meant a man who had sex with a lot of women, but now started to refer to men who had sex with other men. And there was another word at the time, gay cat, at, in, at this time, which meant homosexual boy. And by 1955, the word gay officially acquired the new added definition of meaning homosexual males and gay men themselves uh, have kind of been behind the driving force of this new definition as you know, we felt and most still do that homosexual quote unquote is way too clinical sounding and is often thought as offensive uh, among gay people. You know, people don't really think homosexual is something you know, most gay guys don't call themselves homosexuals. Most gay guys call themselves gay. And, um, so we kind of took the power away from the word that the negative connotation and made it, uh, synonymous with men who sleep with men. And that's where gay kind of came from ultimately. Um, so that's why we have the word gay. Um, that's why we have the word, um, le um, queer, um, when I went about the word lesbian, um, and lesbian, you know, gay, you can use gay to refer to a female who is gay, obviously. I mean, female can be gay as well, but typically you refer to a woman who sleeps with women exclusively as a lesbian. And, um, it means a female homosexual or a woman who's primarily attracted to other women. And it came from the Greek island of Lesbos, um, because the poet Sappho, who lived there in like hundreds of years before Christ, uh, she was an intellectual and a poet who wrote a lot of love poems for other women. And although a lot of her poetry has been destroyed by religious fundamentalists since then, the few poems that that remain of hers they clearly speak about how she was in love with women all the time. So the, the word lesbian kind of came about in the 1800s and in the kind of feminist era of the 60s and 70s, it got its you know typical meaning as we see it today. And so that's where the word lesbian comes from. And I'm not sure if, you know, most lesbians prefer to be called lesbian or, or gay. Um, and I find that most of them, I, I think in my experience, the majority of them, are you know they prefer to be called um to be called lesbians and that's fine so um that's what i call them <laughs> myself and that's what they are and then there's the word trans uh gender now this is something that i don't know a lot about in terms of um what the proper terminology is to use because um the word transgender to me, that's what I use when I refer to someone who is, is transitioned from a male to female or from female to male. And they've had the entire, uh, physical changes and everything else. And even if they haven't, I still call them that because they're transgendered. I say transgender because there's someone whom is trans, you know, <laughs> uh, crossing from one gender to the, to the other. And some people don't like to use the word transgendered. Some people like the word trans, um, or in transition, or, I mean, there's all sorts of things. And, and one of the people, um, that's very vocal about, um, how, what words and terminology you should and shouldn't use is Laverne Cox, uh, of Orange is the New Black, you know, that show, which was a good show, by the way. Um, she says, um, you referring to someone as transgender can sound really odd to them. And, um, to them, they say, don't say, tr they don't say transgender or transgenders. They say, say so-and-so is a transgender man or a transgender woman, or the, par the parade includes many transgender people, but you don't say Tony is transgender or the parade included many transgenders. 